Hey, folks, welcome back to Rugby Ascendant. This is Chris in Pennsylvania. My uh, special guest today is from Rugby Atlanta, Rugby ATL. That's Rory van Voigt from New Zealand. Another Kiwi. It's it's a lot of Kiwis on the program this week. So welcome to the, the conversation there, Roy. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me on here. Nah, it's my pleasure. Looking forward to it. Got had a chance to see you play a couple of times uh, in person down there in Atlanta. Also, uh, this past weekend in a, in a bruising, um, but surprisingly a high scoring game against Rugby United New York. Um, that was that was a tough, tough match and a, a little disappointing outcome, but um, it could have gone the other way at the end for Rugby ATL. Yeah, definitely what you just said there. Like it was disappointing for sure. Um, like we created a lot of things. <laughs> created a lot of things, but then the execution wasn't there for us at to the uh, for that game. So hopefully, hopefully get to see them later on, later on one more time and make amends for it. Now late in the game, I noticed that uh, you got tackled from behind. It looked like an awkward tackle. I uh, wasn't sure if you if you took an injury there, but you seem to be okay after the game. Uh, anything? Any niggling effects from that uh, that tackle? Yeah, no, nah, it's all the legs all fine now. Uh, it was a wee bit sore on the plane, but no, nah, it's come right. It's good as. So you are from, uh, gee, uh, let's see, uh, the South Island, New Zealand, correct? Yeah, correct, yeah. The closest I've been to your home is Nelson, which is a long way off. <laughs> yeah, that's like the top of the South Island. I'm like near the bottom. Exactly. I, I went to yeah. Nelson for the uh, 2011 World Cup. You, The Eagles were playing uh, Italy. That was the last game I went to for that World Cup. Yeah, yeah, so that was uh, was a game that I think it was rescheduled. It was supposed to be in Christchurch, but the uh, earthquake had just happened. So I think Nelson wound up getting a game. Uh, Nelson's a good spot to end up in. Yeah, Lots no, it was it was lovely. I was I was pleasantly surprised that w- it wouldn't have been on my list of places I had to hit because I wanted to go to Christchurch, yeah. but then, but then uh, it was a pleasant surprise. But you're from yeah. down south there, and I'll make sure I get this correctly. I pronounce this is Bal Clutha, that around yeah. there. Okay, correct. Now this is a roaring metropolis that uh, is internationally known for its cosmopolitan scene with uh, hundreds of thousands of residents. Yes, no, <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Not quite. About four thousand or so, four or five thousand. So uh, four or five thousand uses is indication of some sort of agricultural area. Are, are you from a farming family or no? Yep, yep, from a farming family. Yep. What, what sort of farm? Right. Are you? Uh, so yeah, like a dairy farm. Are you um, serious? Are you serious? Yeah. I was. I, I, was, I, was, a, I was a dairy, dairy farmer. Farming. I was a dairy farmer. Oh no. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Uh, we had, we had uh, jerseys and Guernseys and, and a few Holsteins, but the focus was jerseys because the high butterfat, con- yeah. butter, high butterfat content. What, what sort of uh, yeah. dairy cows do you guys have? Uh, Frisian. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Frisian. Oh, yeah. Jersey getting around. Yeah, for those of you tuning yeah. in now and you were hoping to hear a rugby conversation, my apologies, but we're going to descend <laughs> into the dairy industry. So, <laughs> yeah. so Rory, uh, how did you get involved in rugby and when did you start? I mean, look, as, as I mentioned to Tay earlier, you know, uh, children in New Zealand were born and they're issued uh, almost immediately with nappies and a rugby ball. What's it like for you? Yeah, uh, yeah, like you've mentioned there, like we, it's our national sport. Um, like as long as my memory goes, as I remember, is rugby's been a part of it. So just pretty much into it, started playing when I was well, wanted to play. Like I had my older brother, he was playing a game and, always wanted to play. So I started when I was about four, nearly five, but when I was four years old and since then just been loving it. I used to love, love watching it always as a kid and still do now. So. But I, the area you come from, uh, it's, it's not, not major population based. So, uh, it just, does everybody play? Does that keep the level of rugby up or do you travel a lot to play rugby what, that far uh, south? No, you, like obviously through the grades it's a wee bit different. Um, but, uh, like through school, through school like where I'm from so there's a lot of different little towns from where I'm from so as you start off as like a junior there you'll start playing like around the place um like you might have to drive like 30 minutes but it's not far um so it's actually pretty good for, in terms of that and then you go to school and then you'll start playing teams from like like further in Otago and down in South and so yeah now you have an interesting background in one respect that uh, not, it's not often that I interview rugby players and I can say this, but you played international touch rugby for a couple of seasons. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, so, I mean, a lot of people don't realize who are not familiar with the game. And of course, one of the things we're hoping to do is, you know, open rugby up to more of the world is that there's all sorts of rugby. There's sevens, there's tens, there's fifteens, there's beach rugby. There's, there's all sorts of things. Well, can you tell us a little bit about that experience playing touch rugby? Yeah. So yeah, growing up, so I played, uh, rugby in the winter and then touch touch is like our my summer sport so uh, a lot of people they'll sort of play like cricket or or touch touch is a big one um, 
so in New Zealand, they'll sort of play pick one of those two. Um, and yeah, I, I like I love playing touch. Uh, managed to get like a bit of success in it as well. So that also that helped with like always wanting to play. Um, managed to get into a few rep teams and whatnot and represent the country. So it was like a pretty special, pretty special feature of, like in my in my life so far. So you've also played Miter 10. We, I've talked to a few guys who played Miter 10, uh, actually three today. Rowan played Miter 10. We had Tay playing Miter 10. What's a Miter 10 like? And, uh, you know, uh, I looked uh, that I noticed this season that uh, another sponsor is out there now. So now it's like the Bunning National uh, Professional yeah. Championship. Yeah. So I, I've gotten used to saying Miter 10 for years now. Now I have to change the Bunning. But uh, what was it like for you playing in Miter 10? That was awesome. That was uh, <clears throat> just getting into that level. Um it was a major goal that I had for myself. And once I got there, I actually got there a bit earlier than what I planned um, when I set out some some goals and whatnot. And I got there through through a bit of um, bit of a chance opened up with some injuries and whatnot. So I got there and like, I still think, thinking about it now, like uh, it's crazy to think that I actually got there and then to continue after that first game for the next couple of years, it's, uh, it's a very, very special to me. Now, you've also played with a team that's, that's pretty well known uh, in, in New Zealand, that is, and that's the Southland Stags. What was that experience like? Yeah, it was cool. So they're pretty <clears> – I'm in – so back Luther, it's in the middle of like Dunedin, Otago, and Invercargill, which is Southland. So originally I was up in Otago, for, but never like played for Otago or not. Like I played some age group age grade stuff for like the Otago country. Um but once I got into like the Southland environment, like I loved it and I'm pretty good. I'm super stoked that that's where I've ended up and that's what my team is now. So, Excellent. So just very quickly here before we wrap up. Um, okay. Uh, you know, uh, Balcruta is a long way from Atlanta. I mean, a really long way. I don't know if you could get much yeah. further away unless you like, I don't know, went to the surface of the moon or something like that. That's a long trip. How did you rock up in Atlanta? How did you wind up there? So my... My first year with Southland, uh, I had a head coach, Dave Hewitt, who knew Scott. And um, I'm guessing they were just in contact. Obviously, Scott having a new team starting here. And uh, he's reached out and Dave put my, I think he put my name forward and then got the contact with Scott. Uh, and then we had the FaceTime and just stayed in touch and managed to get, find myself over here. Well, it's, you know, that almost sounds like it's almost, uh, it's who you know that makes a difference, but but that would be selling selling you short because it's not just who you know, it's also the talent. You clearly got the talent to, to be doing what you're doing. What's it been like playing with rugby ATL this season, this, a team that has a big focus on defense? Um, has that been a different experience for you or just something you fit right into? No, nah, it's very, very similar to my team back home. For a massive, exactly like I've just come the season I come out of, it was every game grind like, a couple points in it if it was high scoring, low scoring, but it's always going to be a grind and it's always tight. Um, but playing for ATL, it's uh, it's a privilege. Um, we've we've created started to create like a winning culture, and you know it's pretty special to be a part of. Like it's not it's not that common to have something like that. So absolutely, you've definitely created a winning culture there, a very interesting culture. Also, a culture that seems pretty focused on learning and developing. Uh, even though you're playing yep. professional sports, uh, Scott Lawrence is really seems to be in it. Uh, Roy, I want to I want to thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate the chance to chat with you. Uh, best of luck the rest of the season, and we'll get together again sometime, and and we'll, we'll offer people dairy farming advice. I think that we can offer <laughs> tips on that. So thanks a lot for your time, Roy. Thank you. Thanks for having me.